Okay. Hello, everybody. I will now call the meeting to order for uh, Wednesday, May 17th of the Aviation Advisory Board. I'm Clancy Maloney, the chairman, and Scott will give his usual information. Thank you, Clancy. Good evening. My name is Scott Wagner. I'm the Lawrence Airport Manager, and welcome to the May 17th meeting of the Aviation Advisory Board. I just have a few housekeeping items for this still hybrid meeting. City staff and aviation board members will be in person at City Hall virtual. Participation is allowed for any participant, including staff and the public. Live public comment can be made in person or at City Hall or virtually using the Zoom link. This meeting is being recorded and broadcast on the city's YouTube channel and cable channel 25. If you are on Zoom, please remember to mute yourself during the meeting when you are not speaking. The chat function for this public meeting is disabled and all chats will go directly to me. When the chair calls for in-person public comment, individuals should indicate if they wish to speak and staff will direct you to the podium. Individuals participating via Zoom should use the raise hand function to indicate they wish to speak. Please teach your name before speaking and comments will be limited to three minutes. The city reserves the right to mute people or turn individual videos off to minimize distractions during the meeting. And now I'll turn the meeting back over to our board chair, Clancy Maloney. Thank you, Scott. Um, the first order of, well, I wanna say something first before we start. First of all, I wanna welcome um, Greg Gardner, who's behind there, who's gonna be coming on our board at the end of the month and a visitor from California, Wendy Hall, who is Tiffany's mom. Thank you, Clancy. So welcome both of you. Um, first order of business is minutes from the February 1st meeting. Um, if there are no corrections from anybody, speak up. I would like a motion to accept them. And a second. Second. Who first did it? <laughs> oh, I thought you motioned. I'll move. Okay. Thank I'll you. second. <laughs> and Richard. Okay. All in favor? Let's aye. Say aye. Okay. Motion and pass. And then I guess we're now to public comment if there's anybody who has anything they'd like to uh, say. Okay. Next. Okay. It's back to you, Scott. Report manager's report. Yeah. Let me get that pulled up online here you've been very busy it's been a busy time since our last regular meeting for sure and think I want to thank everyone while we have a little lull here for uh, attending our strategic planning meeting uh, just a few weeks ago back in April uh, I thought it was a great session and um, I appreciate everyone's attendance at Fire station number five for that event. Okay, let me try to go through all the things that's been happening since we last met in a regular meeting. I mentioned this at our last meeting, but um, coming up this summer is a couple of great conferences and we've got several board members indicating interest to attend. I've been helping with the planning as uh, secretary of the board for the Kansas Association of Airports and that conference is coming up June 14th through 16th in Atchison. Um, if you go to the kansasairport.org website, the conference agenda is posted, and I think we're going to have a great lineup of speakers, which is uh, a lot of what I've been working on for the conference. I know Clancy is going, and I will get Greg Gardner and Tiffany registered uh, next week for that. And if anyone else would like to attend, please let me know. At the end of the summer, uh, the annual Four States Conference takes place in Kansas City. This is the four states comprising the FAA Central Region, and it's always a great uh, conference, which is much larger than the KAA conference to attend and meet FAA staff and get presentations uh, from them on kind of the latest uh, topics uh, from the past year. There's also a, a pretty large uh, number of airport vendors that's always interesting uh, to talk to with the latest uh, technology and to uh, talk, talk to vendors as well at that conference. Uh, Tiffany and uh, Greg are going to that conference as well. And if anyone else wants to attend, I will get you all registered for that one as well. Back in February, I attended a virtual training through AAAE called Critical Elements of Airport Planning. Um, it was 
a really good all-day webinar that focused on understanding critical aircraft from identification to implementation. All the resource materials that AAA presented uh, were excellent, and I think it really helped me kind of to understand all the planning metrics that will go into a, a possible runway extension uh, project. Back in February, Lloyd and I had an interview with a KU journalism student out at the terminal. I never really saw any of the video, so uh, hopefully it turned out okay. <laughs> uh, but it got broadcast over the KU uh, TV network. In late February and March, I attended a four-week session. It was four Thursday nights put on by the K-State Extension Office here in town out at the fairgrounds, and it was on board leadership basics. It was excellent. It, uh, was um, attended by a number of kind of board liaisons from across the city spectrum. It was, um, you know, f ranging from uh, Just Foods board members to church board members to city staff uh, board liaisons. Uh, and it was just a really good training. And we incorporated some of those materials into our strategic planning session uh, that we held in April. So the timing of that was just really good. And I was thankful that I uh, had the ability to, to, to go to that training. This we've kind of re reported on before in terms of the bipartisan infrastructure legislation that passed about a year and a half ago now in uh, December of 2021. Uh, it has awarded kind of an unprecedented pot of funds to airports nationwide. And as you know, we were able to get the grant last year for the terminal in, in the amount of about a million dollars. We weren't successful in getting a, a second round of funding to kind of complete that, that project at the terminal, which includes the airport access road, uh, extension of the long-term parking, and improvement of uh, the monument sign. But we'll resubmit again, and I'm hopeful that maybe the uh, third time's a charm on that. I can also tell you that the city of Lawrence has put that uh, second phase of the project into our CIP planning process. Uh, I we participated in a meeting yesterday regarding the scoring of that project internally, and we'll see if it kind of makes a cut for city general obligation bond funding uh, for 2024. On May 9th, I did get notice from uh, Senator Jerry Moran's office that we had received 587,000 in our bill funds. Uh, it was released for our uh, main taxiway A improvement project. It was a little bit of a surprise call because we hadn't really asked FAA for those funds yet or to use them yet, but nonetheless, we'll take them. Um, but we're kind of in a little bit of a holding pattern on that project. It's really, we want to see where this uh, runway feasibility extension study takes us and what the recommendations coming out of that uh, study uh, will be in terms of do we need to strengthen uh, taxiway A? Um, should we also redo the lights at that time? Um, but nonetheless, those funds we'll, we'll be able to utilize out at the airport. And I'm, I'm thankful that the senator's office helped us uh, get those secured. At our last uh, couple meetings, we talked about uh, how the United Way possibly having another event out at the airport. I did meet with them uh, a few weeks ago, and they, they do want to hold an event again this year, but kind of a scaled back event. Last year, they had kind of an all-day event where they invited the public and families to come out, and then a charity ride event, and then in the evening, a dinner event. This year, they're thinking along the lines of just holding a um, charity ride event uh, towards the end of uh, September. But also last week, their United Way Douglas County Advisory Council met to discuss this event. And I think they're also maybe considering a dinner again at the hangar. If they just do a dinner, um, we won't need to go through the end of the city special event process, I don't believe, because it, it will be just kept internal to that hangar. Um, we're going to continue to meet with them uh, regarding that. And then this topic is on your board agenda tonight to possibly co-host a Hope and House out at the uh, terminal on September 24th in conjunction with their charity flight event uh, because the timing should be good for completion of the uh, terminal and having an open house at, at the same time. So you guys will talk about that in a minute. 
The Fuel Farm Project, we've been talking about this one for a long time. I need to get with Lloyd here next week because we finally have a date for the work. Lloyd of uh, the week of June 5th, and I need to set up a meeting with you to kind of coordinate uh, the scheduling of that. Uh, we had another meeting uh, a few weeks ago to discuss really how to reinstall the new pumps that arrived larger than the existing pumps, so they just couldn't be unbolted and replaced. We have a, a, a good solution for that that won't involve any cutting, sparks, or welding. Uh, hopefully a, a nice, safe uh, solution to reinstalling uh, those pumps. So I'll get with you, Lloyd, next week on that project. Let's see, just a few updates on uh, talking about the airport. I still like to get out to the community when I can. The big Rotary Club, which meets at noon on Maselli, has had a whole month of airport talks. Mm -hmm. So I attended last week when uh, Tammy Willits spoke about women in aviation and her role, what she does in the community and some of her charity work. This past Tuesday I attended and Derek Rogers and Al Stuber were there and they talked about all of their flying exploits in the city and how they coordinate their um, stunt maneuvers and flying sm smoke at uh, various events in Lawrence and how they promote aviation. And then this coming Monday I'll be giving that club uh, some updates on everything going on at the airport. So board members are certainly uh, welcome to attend if you like. And again, that club meets at noon at Maselli's. I know I passed all this KIP information on to the board back in February when we got wind that we had received quite a substantial amount of funding from the state of Kansas through their Kansas Airport Improvement Program, which I kind of view as the backstop of the federal uh, AIP program. You know, the airport gets the bulk of its funds from the Airport Improvement Program administered by FAA. But a lot of times we don't get projects from that pot of money. Uh, and this program with the state of Kansas kind of steps in and helps Kansas airports get some additional funding, get some projects on the, underway that FAA may not have funded, or in partnership with their funds, we can use uh, federal funds as well. So they announced uh, that we received about $1.4 million in projects, and I've got uh, Brett Garvery's kind of list of those projects uh, on our agenda later that we can go through. But we got pretty much everything that we asked for, which is uh, incredible because the state of Kansas program the past 10 years or so has only been a $5 million program annually. Um, this past year, they were able to wrangle uh, about $11 million out of KDOT. So it was kind of a one-time uh, larger pot of funds. And out of that, out of that $11 million, Lawrence got $1.4 million. So I felt like we'd, we did pretty good. And uh, we're moving forward with several of these projects right now, which we'll uh, talk about here in a second. It's on, it's on your agenda. I like to keep you guys updated on kind of the couple groups I'm a part of in terms of the uh, American Association of Airport Executives, or AAAE. I continue to sit in on the General Aviation Committee meetings that meets once a month, as well as the Emerging Aviation Technologies Working Group. That group I particularly enjoy because they're talking about all the kind of cutting edge technologies that are moving forward in the aviation world and I posted a couple of those uh, agendas from the past few months just so you can kind of peruse them and, and look at the topics that these groups are discussing. The airport sanitary sewer study, I had a meeting, uh, Lloyd and I were part of uh, that meeting I think earlier this week. Uh, we we're talking about um, you know how to sewer the airport, the engineering group uh, PEC is diving deep into the water flows and needs and uh, future modeling uh, for their work. And we should expect to have a, a report. I won't want to promise by the August meeting, but maybe we'll see something by August, but they're definitely working on it. So that's, um, that's good news for the airport, good news for the city. Uh, that project as well is in the city CIP project to be a, really a city funded project because FAA is not going to spend money on our sanitary sewer system when they can't even help us with other stuff out at the airport. So uh, I, I'm happy this is moving forward. The uh, next item I'm super happy <laughs> finally got taken care of. Uh, this was an issue I had inherited when I became airport manager that the 
previous engineering group had failed to close out the runway project that took place in 2020. We still had an amount of $476,000 and some change to draw down for that project, which was completed years ago that ADG uh, really walked away from. We engaged Garver to help us uh, close out that project, submit the final documentations, and we were able to finally get those funds from FAA on March 2nd. Very happy about that and very happy uh, with the work that Garver did to help me on that. I reported on this base grant application in the past. This was kind of another pot of funds that the state of Kansas had coming out of um, COVID. Uh, we had applied in 2022. We reapplied again this year. There was such a demand statewide for that program, uh, and we, we did not get uh, funding awarded uh, from that particular pot of state funds. This next one, I. I believe I updated you guys on. Uh, I was able to attend the AAAE legislative conference uh, back in March. It was kind of a quick two days out to Washington, D.C., where that organization brought in really some key stakeholders that are discussing the FAA reauthorization and explaining where they are at in terms of that process. Um, key members of Congress came to the group and spoke. Uh, key FAA staffers spoke. And then after the sessions were over, I was able to go to the Hill and meet with our federal delegation and their key staff to discuss our airport projects and especially our possible runway extension uh, project and really meet with them and, and get that on their radar. So that I was very fortunate to, to be able to do that back in March. And as a result of that trip, uh, that while I was out there in DC, I of course invited everyone to come to our airport and Representative Tracy Mann uh, followed us up on that. So Lawrence is now part of this huge Kansas first district which encompasses uh, a good hunk of the state of Kansas. It used to be just kind of a Western Kansas district but now Lawrence is part of that and Tracy Mann is now our, our Congressman uh, for the first district and he hadn't been to our airport before. So he made a, kind of a quick stop, but end up spending more than an hour on April 12th. We um, gave him a tour of the uh, Eurotech facility along with their co-owner Tina Decker and Mayor Lisa Larson was out there. So I was thankful that the mayor was able to quickly kind of make time on her schedule because it was uh, a really a, a last minute visit. I, I, I told Lloyd about it uh, the day of the event because it was such a, a last minute uh, scheduling thing for uh, the congressman's staff. But he was very impressed with our airport, uh, is certainly in a position to to help us uh, because he sits on the House Transportation Committee where the FAA reauthorization is, is winding its way through Congress and he, he uh, offered his help in any way um, possible. Let me see, what else has been going on? Um, as part of the Kansas Association of Airports, we've been lobbying the state of Kansas for an increase in these KIAP funds, this legislative session. It's been pegged at $5 million now for at least 10 years. And $5 million doesn't go as far as it did 10 years ago, as we all know, just due to inflation. I mean, I could spend $5 million at our airport, as you all know. Uh, so we've been lobbying for an increase in that state of Kansas funding. A uh, bill was actually introduced by Representative Clays of Salina to increase funding annually to $18 million. Um, he's a, a Republican in Salina, was very supportive of uh, that request. It was kind of introduced late in the session, so it didn't really have the time to gain a lot of traction. But as a result of those efforts of the KAA board, uh, the KDOT secretary came back to us and said, okay, let's work on this problem between now and October. And so uh, KA dot Division of Aviation has formed this uh, Kansas Airport Joint Task Force to meet over the summer and into October and present a report to the KDOT Secretary by October 3rd to uh, propose improvements to that program to tell him what's it, what it will take to bring Kansas airports up to at least you know some minimum standards uh, to meet all the funding gaps that Kansas airports aren't receiving from FAA and to present a, a cost recommendation on, on how to get there. So I'm, I'm happy that this uh, body has formed. We've met a couple times in the last few weeks and I'll keep you updated as, as the work of this uh, task force gets going. Uh, we were supposed to have 
Leadership Lawrence flights on April 20th. The last couple of classes haven't been able to do that, so everyone was excited to get them out there, but then uh, the weather canceled that April 20th event. So we'll, I'm sure, hear from uh, Sue Hack at the chamber who heads up that um, Leadership Lawrence stuff when they want to reschedule and maybe Richard will still be around uh, to uh, wrangle up some pilots for that. But if not, we'll uh, lean on the board and uh, keep going with that because it's a, it's a great opportunity to get people out to the airport that are leaders in our community. And with that, I'll open it up for, for questions. Greg Good evening, Gardner. Uh, Scott. Greg Gardner. Uh, the question I had was relative to uh, Senator Moran's five hundred thousand. What's the time frame for expending the funds, and how does that match with the runway extension planning timing? Yeah, thank you, Greg. That, that's a great question. So we haven't received any grant agreements from FAA. Typically, those agreements have a four-year window uh, to utilize the funds. So that gives us some time. Um, but again, as soon as we got that message, city staff met with Garver and FAA Central Region staff saying, hey, we know we have this feasibility project going on and we want to work with you in terms of when we think this project is ripe for bringing forward to uh, the construction phase on it. So I think we've got a good window to, to use those funds. That, that bill legislation is only a five-year program anyway. Um, so it has a relatively short window uh, to utilize all the funds in the bill program. So um, th that's a good question, and we'll be, you know, as you'll see here in a minute, we're working on a lot of projects right now, and that's one of them. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Um, I guess you're next anyway. An update on the terminal improvement project. Yeah, so that project I expected uh, to be under construction right now, but we've had a few delays. We did have a pre-construction meeting a few weeks ago with uh, the team, including Hetrick and his staff. Uh, there's just been a few details to be worked out in terms of <clears throat> comments going back and forth between um, city staff and, and some shop drawings and revising some of the plans. Just today there is some comments being addressed on some ADA issues. So just a few minor changes. We expect a billing permit to be uh, issued any time. A notice to proceed, uh, I expect it, you know, again, uh, this week. So that's kind of the update on the timing of the start of construction. Um, the goal is to finish it by mid to late August. We talked with Lloyd and, you know, ideally we won't have any uh, construction impact during KU football season that we'll, we can have most of the construction done uh, before that season starts because we know the airport can get busy on home uh, KU football game days. The construction team will work with Hetrick staff to maintain uh, terminal operations uh, throughout the project. The, uh, one upside is that we did do the bathroom renovations last year, so they don't have to be touched. Uh, so obviously the, the bathrooms will stay open throughout the project, and we'll just have to uh, route terminal visitors through different entrances as the project, project uh, gets started and different phasing of the project uh, commences here in the next few weeks. The scope of this particular project, this is, again, the, the, roughly the million dollars we got from FAA last year. Renovate the building interior, improve accessibility, including ADA door openers. Um, the, the counter there and uh, that Lloyd uses uh, will be ADA accessible. There will be a portion of that that will be uh, ADA compliant. Um, replacing the roof, including the skylights. And from the contractor, there is a little bit of lead time on some of those um, building materials. We are improving the parking, and I'll bring up a graphic just in a second on that. One of the big things we wanted to address during this project is improving the poor drainage on the east side of the terminal and kind of the uh, entrance road that leads into the apron there uh, continuously takes water. So this project will address that and will create some new uh, ADA accessible parking. And let me bring up kind of a map uh, that shows uh, some of those.
Yeah, so the first phase is taking care of everything inside uh, the terminal. Here's kind of the, the parking improvements that FAA allowed us to work on with this particular phase of the project. So we'll restripe and repave all of this area shown. The water ponding has been taking place over in, in this area, right in here and right in here. And this will be uh, improved and addressed with the project, creating some more brand new parking spots i think i counted about 10 new parking spots around the center uh island there stripe some more ada accessible parking spots uh, right in front of the terminal and do some um, restriping on the parking lot there the second phase again uh hopefully we'll get some fa uh, funds for this uh the second phase of the project because now we've got the project plans are done they're on the shelf they're ready to bid so that should be helpful in terms of the scoring of that project uh, with FAA, hopefully, and uh, it has helped, I know, with the scoring of that project internally as a standalone city project because it's ready to bid. Uh, second phase would Im improve and add to parking lot spaces on the long-term area, create some pedestrian connectivity uh, to the, the sidewalk that's out here along Bryant Way. We would reconstruct the entire uh, entrance road to the terminal. Uh, including um, some new signage and um, a new monument sign would be a part of that project as well. So that would be uh, the next phase of the project. Anybody have questions on that agenda item? Just one question, Scott. Is the, the door on the east side of the terminal building part of that phase one project too? Yes. That is, that will get installed in the canteen area to uh, allow pilot access 24-7 uh, to the bathroom and there'll be a, another door installed there between the canteen and the rest of the terminal lobby, yes. Scott, is the, the you say the planning is gonna be, everything's gonna be finished by mid to late August, even if they're with a start that's a little bit late, that's still gonna work? That's my understanding, okay. yes. Yeah, in terms of the big world of construction projects, this is not a, a huge one. I think once they get in and get started, they'll, they'll mow it out pretty quickly as long as all the, the building finishes um, come in on a timely basis. Okay. Is there any kind of a timeline for phase two or is that just uh, kind of up in the air? That's a great question, Dan. I would say right now it is up in the air because we don't have a funding source identified. I, ideally, we would get a round three of the bill uh, funding. I know the notice of funding opportunity for round three hasn't came out yet. I think it's gonna come out sometime this summer uh, with probably award announcements uh, taking place first part of 2024. The other way to get funding on this would be if this project scores high enough in the city's budgetary process this year and it gets put into uh, the 2024 um, City of Lawrence uh, CIP project. So, okay, so we're talking about next year. Definitely next year. Yeah, I'm, I'm really optimistic with all of our federal interests in our airport. And this has been the first thing coming out of my mouth. Help us with the second round of funding that once we get our application in, um, Maybe our federal delegation will have some type of pull with the FAA scoring process, but we'll see. I guess the one comment I would have on phase two is, will we put a pedestrian gate in the wildlife fence as it goes past Eurotech because the sidewalk's blocked by the fence at this time? That is correct. I know we talked about that when we were going through the design comments. Um, I, I believe that is in the construction plans for that phase two. Uh, but yeah, that, that was definitely an item we talked about. Any other questions? Okay. Um, are we going to get anything from Garver or not, Scott? Well, let me see if Brett... Holt is on the call tonight. I am not seeing him. Uh, the item uh, that I posted was what all the board members saw at our retreat a couple weeks ago. Uh, so those are the slides that Brett Garver, uh, or Brett Holt with Garver, uh, went through. I kind of asked him to give us an update on the T-Hanger taxi lane project, but I see that Kyle's on the call, so maybe when we get to that point here in a second, Kyle can uh, hop on and verbally kind of uh, lead us through where we stand with the T-Hanger 
project, but I'll just kind of quickly run through these since we, we didn't post them April 19th with, with our um, strategic planning meeting. So there's kind of the, some of the current projects that we're working on. We've got the bill funding for uh, the mill and overlay around the T hangers. And I'll ask uh, Kyle to give us an update here in a minute on kind of where we stand on that. Uh, we got the KDOT funding for um, the reconstruction of taxi lanes uh, A and B, widening of taxi lanes B, eastern edge of the taxi lane C to accommodate ADG uh, two type aircraft and various drainage improvements. And those were all kind of related to that T hanger uh, project. We kind of went through all the phasing Brett did at our last meeting, so I won't dwell on that. Here's kind of where we stand right now. We opened bids March 28th. We only received two. Sunflower paving was a low bid. It was a little bit above our engineer's estimate on the project, so we went back to FAA staff and they, we believe, are going to give us some additional funds from our uh, NIPIUS funding to match our bill funding for this project so that we'll have uh, enough funds to award the project, but we kind of are still waiting on FAA to uh, let us submit those grant agreements. We're also still short. Um, I'm trying to remember, Kyle, you might jump on now. I think about $60,000 still with the project that we'll need to uh, supply funding for. So I'm gonna ask Kyle to kind of update us on where we stand right now. Uh, that's right, so we have uh, two uh, federal grants applied for um, an AIP and a bill grant, and we're waiting to get uh, awarded those grants from the FAA. And uh, we have two KAIP grants that we can use for construction on this. And uh, with the higher bids and everything, we got a little bit more grant money uh, from the fe uh, federal grants than was originally proposed, but we're also short on meeting our uh, grant obligations uh, for all of those grants, including ineligible grant and eligible items uh, by about $86,000. Um, so right now we're uh, looking for that money in a CIP committee and once we figure that out where that money's coming from, we'll get this on a uh, city commission agenda and, uh, and also once we get those federal grants that we're assuming will get awarded, we'll get it approved on the city commission agenda and go to construction. Thank you, Kyle. The, the funding for this is extremely complex, let me tell you. Kyle's got a, a very complicated spreadsheet because we've put together four different grants. There's eligible grant areas and there's some ineligible grant areas because neither FAA or KIP like to fund any repairs that are uh, adjacent uh, to the T-hangers, like the, the concrete entrances within so many feet of the T-hanger doors. They, they think it's a, a, a private, non-public, Thing and they're not going to fund it. Um, so the city has to fund the entire portion of any of those types of improvements as well as making our cost match on those four, four grants. The good news is we've got a large pot of money put together for this project. We're optimistic we'll be able to award it this summer. We'll have more details in terms of the, the timing of construction. Either late this summer, I can email out the group, you know, kind of a construction update, and we'll definitely have a pre-construction meeting if we award the project, say, in uh, July with all the T-hanger tenants and airport tenants to, to work through details of the, the timing of construction. So I might stop right here just to see if anybody has questions on the T-hanger project before we scroll through the rest of our projects. Nope. All right, I'll keep going. So Brett had uh, put together kind of a summary of all the Kansas Airport Improvement Funds we were awarded. So the, the, the big one, the smallest one in dollar amount was a feasibility study. We were awarded uh, $99,000 for that. And that will tell us kind of everything we need in order to possibly ex expand our primary runway. You know, runway length and range analysis, 
pavement strength analysis with various types of aircraft that we expect to possibly use, Lawrence Regional, pavement geometry, and, and we'll get uh, some firmer cost estimates that we can start to work with our uh, federal and FAA staff on if we want to move forward with, with that particular project. Uh, something the board has talked about the last couple years is updating the master plan. You know, it wasn't a real high list, high on the year, um, CIP committee list, but now we have funding for it, so we'll do it. You know, I think it's needed. Uh, it will help us with everything going on out at the airport. So the timing of these two projects will work together. The feasibility study will feed into the master plan in terms of uh, the data uh, that the engineering firm will need to update our master plan. We awarded $360,000 for that project. I kind of expect this feasibility study to wrap up by this fall, and then we can get kicked off on a, a master plan at update later this year. We talked about that at our strategic planning meeting um, back in April as well. Another huge bonus and takeaway from the KAIP awards was uh, the apron out at the airport is in need of rehabilitation. As Lloyd and I have talked about several times, it's in bad shape right now. We were awarded $130,500 for design, $800,000 for construction. Um, we know it's probably going to cost more than that, especially if we strengthen it for possible larger aircraft to utilize the apron or if we expand it. We were just talking about that, Kyle and I, at a CIP, City of Lawrence CIP committee meeting tomorrow. Um, and again, all of this is kind of tying together with what happens with a possible runway extension project, but we've got this pot of money, we've got four years to use it, and uh, we will. So at least we've got uh, this much pinned down uh, to work on uh, the apron project with. Uh, taxiway A lighting, uh, which would improve uh, the, replace the current incandescent lights on taxiway A. We awarded uh, design costs for that in the amount of $74,000, uh, and that would upgrade them to uh, LED lighting. And it, that, Project award also included replacement of the existing uh, wind cone and segmented circle out at the airport. The feasibility study, uh, these are kind of the, the top of the list projects that will get kicked off uh, this year. Uh, that study will look at uh, these elements out at the airport. We talked about all these things at our uh, strategic planning meeting, so I'm not kind of going to go through them again unless anybody wants to dwell on them, but we don't have a Brett Holt here on the Zoom to go into any additional depth of discussion on these items. But I just wanted to put these slides out there since we hadn't posted them for a strategic planning meeting. One thing Brett did talk about, and Tiffany texted me about this yesterday. I'm sorry, Tiffany, I didn't get back to you, but uh, one of the things Brett talked about is possible need for having some firefighting resources out at the airport. And yesterday, not yesterday, Monday, I believe, the city and county had a joint meeting where they were just discussing um, fire and medical issues in Douglas County. So that discussion is, is taking place. Tiffany had asked if they had been made aware of a possible um, airport needs or runway uh, expansion project. They, they had not, to my knowledge, Tiffany, but I certainly plan to engage with our fire chief on that, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that uh, certainly upper leadership uh, with the city of Lawrence knows what we're doing and um, you know certainly executive management staff with the city uh, knows what fire and med is up to. So there's not a complete lack of communication on that topic, but uh, putting two and two together, I'll make sure that that happens, Tiffany. I guess that's the end of uh, Brett's slides uh, for that particular uh, report that he gave at our strategic planning meeting. And uh, again, I really wanted to post those tonight just to give you an update on the T hangar project because we uh, had talked about that at our last meeting. and. Uh, that, that was a project, as you recall, that has quickly come together since our November, November meeting. I think that's all I have. Okay, Chair. thank you, Scott. Um, Actually, I got one question, Scott. Is there any chance any of this grant money that's floating around would help with the 
taxiway expansion to the new proposed hangars that we're looking at building? You know, that's a great question, Richard. Uh, the answer is yes, in part. It would be, since it's a public taxiway, eligible for some of the bill uh, funding. Uh, so the answer is yes. That'd be kind of kind of handy to offset some of that. Okay. Yeah, um, you know, a lot of it will depend on uh, how those projects uh, ultimately proceed, uh, what the length of the taxiway to get to new hangars uh, will be, and you know, kind of how we work with FAA and allocating um, our bill funds that we have, or maybe reach out to our. FAA staff or our federal delegation on unallocated uh, bill funds that may be available for that project. So, yeah, I think the short answer is yes. Uh, we will certainly go after federal funds because we don't have uh, a lot of city funds allocated for construction of that project at this point. Sounds good. Okay. And I want to second. I want to second Tiffany's concern about um, airport um, rescue and firefighting too. That's a I'm hoping that we can find some cooperation in creative ways since we may or may not be able to build on the airport as Richard has pointed out in the past. So, okay, uh, next I think Lloyd, you're up. Uh, I think I brought this up before, but I'm not sure I covered all of this too as far as some of the events going on this summer. Um, the first one that will be coming up is a, uh, well, it looks like I'm going to lap over on some stuff. I don't know if you're aware the police department uses their apron out there for their driving training that they have annually. They come out and you, they put up their cones and, and uh, well, fire department's done it a couple times as well, but uh, they've got the dates of June 15th. 20th and 22nd, they're going to be out there those three days from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. And then last year, they kind of took over a little bit more than we wanted, but we'll try to contain them to no more than half the apron. Um, and that will be during the day. And then apparently on the 21st, they want to do a an evening, get more into an evening training. So it would start at like 1 o'clock in the afternoon, go till 11 p.m. that evening. No, I'm not uh, sure you're aware of it. If not, I apologize. But that's in June. Um, Pulsar fly in. They usually meet every year. They're usually in the August and the September. They try to work around the um, uh, football schedule. But this year they're, they're coming in on June 22nd through the 25th. And uh, they're aware that the terminal is going to be torn up and uh, but we'll probably try to work with them over in our hangar, utilize that for whatever functions they need. Uh, they're a good group. They go. They use the local restaurants and hotels to put on their conventions and stuff. And then uh, the Twin Comanche, I know I mentioned it. It's going to be on August 16th through the 20th. Um, I don't have any kind of numbers on any of these. The Pulsars usually range anywhere from 10 to 25 of them. They're small, so they really pack pretty easily in the hangar. The Twin Comanche, or I call it Twin Comanche, I think it's really the Comanche fly in, be singles as well. And it's going to be a, a big anniversary event, so it could draw 50 to 70 aircraft. They don't know. But the, the drawback with them is that they're, they've already committed to hotel space over in the legends. So from an economical impact to Lawrence, uh, their meals, their restaurants, all that kind of set up over there. So we're just we're just gonna be a host as far as a place for them to park their aircraft and probably will come out and have some events there at the airport. So, so. Okay. that's all that's a lot. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Thanks Lloyd. Okay, um, I guess it's my turn now. Um, I have included in this the um, 
Airport Capital Improvement Committee report, we met on February 6th. So some of these items may be overcome by events. Scott, do we, do you've got it pulled up, okay. And we came up with the committee was myself, Richard Haig, Tiffany, and Scott, and Kyle Knockwitz, the city engineer, um, attended so that we could integrate what our priorities were. We had had a meeting previously last fall that established some priorities that, that assisted with getting some of the work done on the taxi lanes and so forth. So the new priorities are, and this, this may answer some of your questions, Richard, is taxi lane phase one for 21, 2024 to 2028 that would service that if there is a new dream air hangar, it would service that. And that came out as our number one priority, but that's contingent on whatever we learn about it. And next would be the apron rehabilitation and extension, which I believe Scott's well addressed. Um, taxiway rehabilitations, the taxiway delta extension to the full length of 119, which I know so many of the pilots in the area are concerned about. And then the runway 119 rehabilitation and then the expansion and building of T hangers, land for approaches, which I know Scott's going to have some work to do on that if we go ahead with the uh, runway extension, and um, then updating the airport master plan. There were a number of projects that we just can't prioritize at this point because we don't really know where funding would come from, but they're still going to stay on the list for the one year's one to five cycle, and those include the airport access road and the sanitary sewer improvements, which Scott has addressed, um, the drainage and erosion control on the south end of the airport, uh, reconstruction of the runway 1533 edge lighting, which I think is, was included earlier, and then things like that we really need acquisition of snow removal equipment and finding a, a building that we can use for um, storage of equipment and that sort of thing, because I know the you know, most of the equipment that's used at the airport just sits outside. So this is totally open for discussion. If anybody wants to add anything or move anything around, please speak up. Otherwise, the other major um, item was that we all agree we need an airport, a full-time airport manager. So uh, that's where we would like to start on this, if there's any, anything anybody would like to add. So. Nancy, I might get you. Is yes. The snow removal equipment? Yeah. Do we make a combination of snow slash ice? I don't know what we can do. I don't know what, what, the, what, is, what is ice removal equipment. It's going to be a combination of either putting pellets out on it or heat or some source, something that, you know, depending on the, the winter, it could affect us. Sure. Uh, and it's more of a cost item, and obviously the equipment's needed to be able to put the, the chemicals on the runway as well. But sure. In conjunction with some of the snow stuff, it's great to get the snow off, but we do have those one or two times, three times a year that it affects us from an IT camp. Okay. Any other comments, additions? Anybody? I, okay. I would just say on the uh, airport manager, having a full-time airport manager, if you just look at all the grant uh, applications that have been done and the amount of funding that has come through the, the diligence of filling out that paperwork, getting it submitted, and actually having your name out there for those grants is incredible, and it out, outweighs the, the wages of a full-time airport manager. There was, a, there was a study, what, Amanda did one, Amanda Sahin did one a couple of years ago, and, and she had done all the research on, on that kind of thing, and I really think that it's something that the city ought to be looking at. I had hoped to have this report to them in time for the current budget update. We missed it because we couldn't get a quorum on the third. So um, Scott's been aware of all of these recommendations, and I strongly recommend that we go ahead with this. We need, if nobody has objections, let's go ahead and add the ice and ice removal equipment. And then I move to adopt the report, Clancy. Okay. Tiffany, who's second? I'll second. Okay. Richard, anybody opposed? Okay. There be no objections. The report is submitted. Scott. Thank you, Clancy. Mm -hmm. uh, I 
will just let you know that I see Angela Buzzard on the call. She is um, the MSO director of the administration, and she's also actively involved in the budgeting process. Yes. As soon as I got this report, I did forward it on to Angela. So she's had it, even though you guys haven't adopted it. Yeah. So um, MSO leadership is aware of your recommendations, mm -hmm. and we're in the thick of budget well, discussions. I had my airport budget meeting with yeah. uh, Angela uh, just this week and, and last week. So, and now's the time. You guys got your information to the right city staff, I would say, Good. in time for budget discussions. The, um, the second item I'd like to talk about from this priorities and finance committee is, right now we've been working on mostly CIP maintenance projects and sort of finances. What I would like to do for the next year that we're going to be working on it is also add the master plan to this consideration. And I, if, if there's some discussion on that, I think please, please continue. But I think that needs to be added to this sort of general subcommittee work that we've been doing on this. So um, there being no objections, I'd like to add that. If anybody has any problems with it, let me know. Okay. Bob's rule of order has taken effect now. Okay, and on the marketing subcommittee. Um, Let me bring that document up, Clancy. Pardon? Let me bring that document up on your okay. marketing committee report. Unfortunately, Jim Laster can't be here today, and he and I met on, let's see, I think it was. On April 7th, David was unable to attend. And we have, this is just for total discussion. We think that some of the marketing ideas, we need plenty of them. We, we aren't ready to make any recommendations at this point. It's just that we think that this needs to be an ongoing process. Um, we did have some opinions about the interior screens or posters that were gonna be at the airport, the fence wraps, and the north terminal window, which even through the input that we got at the last board meeting was definitely leave the window the way it is. So we're gonna do that. Um, then there was strong feeling, and I, and I suspect David would agree with this, that we need a Jayhawk statue mm -hmm. someplace at the airport. And then maybe some ramp side signage and maybe some local artist um, inclusion, maybe a contest or something to improve the interior of the of the terminal. And also, the I know that we've got this unfunded yet is the monument at the entry road. So that might be something that we could, that I, I think that there could be a contest or something going on with that. So if there are other suggestions, I would like to continue the marketing committee and add events to that for the next year. So that, David, if you'll stay on it with us. Happily. Great. <laughs> And I, I'm pretty sure I can talk to him into it, too. I'll have to talk to him when he gets back. And Tiffany has consented to be on that committee also. Great. So we can only have three, so I'll be off and working on the CIP stuff. And Very good. you'll be working with Tiffany and Jim on that. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I uh, speak? mention something that came up just sure. last week? I think of it, uh, a lot of you know about McFarland Aviation down mm -hmm. in Finland. Uh, I had a visit with him last week, and they're, uh, I'm trying to work with them on a bunch of stuff and try to get some more of the activity stuff going on up here. But they, they asked if they could maybe display in the terminal building one of their MT propellers that they market. Uh, I didn't know that that would be a, I thought it might be a good conversation piece. Obviously, we wouldn't consider it until the renovation was done. But How big is it? Well, I think it's a full size, so it'd be, you know, 50, 70, mm -hmm. it'd be, a, I assume, a three-bladed. They could give us a five-bladed, I do, I don't know, but it'd just be something that we could put there in the lobby and, and probably market to a Sam and help them. Uh, be more of a conversation piece and local company, just, you know, uh, market that product in anyway. I think that, that marketing local company is something that we ought to consider at the airport anyway. Yeah, if that committee would look at that That's issue, exactly what would the, avoid and make yeah. a re recommendation on that, that would be exactly. great. Exactly. And we might be able to make it one of the smaller props for them to take much space, but yeah, I think it'd be good just for the general area. 
Well, and as far as adding events to this, we've already got the open house this fall. Which we need to talk about. Yes. You guys need to decide if mm -hmm. we want to have an open house. And then mm -hmm. the other event on that item is uh, I got an email from KDOT that they are having a KDOT uh, Fly Kansas Air Tour again. Right. The dates are October 5th to the 7th. The application deadline is at the end of this month. So if we want to be a, a stop again, you guys need to decide on that. Yeah. Item. So, well... I think, I think, well, tell me what you guys think about the open house idea. I think it would be fabulous. Would I think be. the open house is a great idea, and I think this marketing and uh, Absolutely. Uh, this whole marketing committee, I think, is a good idea. You can go ahead and, um, like, have some of these uh, the local artist inclusion, the Jayhawk <laughs> statue. You could roll events out, like, along the fence and have an event along with that that would increase, sure. you know, the uh, visibility of the airport. And I think that would be a really good idea. I think the, my only hesitation on the air tour is where is our construction process going to be yeah. when that air tour rolls around? October. Yeah. yeah, so it may be, uh, the terminal should be done, but we may be in the middle of taxi lane, which would be good for them to see progress going so they can see where the Kansas funds are going as far as airports go, especially yeah. if the terminal's fresh. But if the terminal's for some reason behind schedule, that could be a challenge. Which reminds me, Richard, we have a new uh, tea hanger tenant out of our airport. If you haven't heard, uh, Bob Brock of uh, Keto Aviation uh, has a tea hanger. <laughs> so he will be a participant on the, the air tour. Now, depending on which taxiway he has to use, maybe that will make up that missing funding to get there that project done. Okay. Chris, David, anything? Okay. <clears throat> Should we go ahead and, and make the application for the air tour? It was so much going on at airport between the terminal and uh, let alone what's been approved and what's hopefully going to be approved um, I think the more visibility that we can lend to it the better within okay. the audience okay Bob's rules I might there, need a little more direction there be the there be there there be no objection I we uh, instruct Scott to go ahead and make an application for uh, so so my further clarification would be when I, because we won't meet again when I had to put this application together, mm -hmm. are you looking to have an overnight stop, which is a bigger commitment, okay. or just a stop on the air tour? Well, it, that's a big organizational difference. It is. Yes. It's a overnight a stop. stop. A fuel stop, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, because we do need to well, we've already a, got a lot of different the, bodies. Which would probably be, a, a, I think, a two to three hour commitment in terms of the air tour. I think the last time it was here was extremely productive for the city. It was. Having the Secretary of Transportation for the state here and, and seeing everything that was going on was, was a big bonus for us. Okay, so we've got the open house. What else is going on? Maybe the air tour. Yeah, and then the three events that Lloyd talked about. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, United Way. And the United Way. What, do they have a schedule yet, Scott? Well, again, they're holding their charity flights on Sunday, September 24th. Yeah. And that's okay. when we're going to the open work house. with them mm -hmm. to have an open house. Yeah. And then I need direction. I I'm, guess I'm hearing that it could be a good idea to be a stop on the air tour, but I definitely need to know if you want to be uh, an overnight stop or just a fuel stop. Uh, May I make a suggestion? Please. Work with Explore Lawrence and Kim Anspa, our CVB, because they would be able to coordinate with you on some of those details as well, perhaps. Yes? Well, uh, okay, board no. member Hall, I would say that you as the event subcommittee <laughs> should work with Kim Anspa because yeah. yeah. uh, I... I'm delighted to. One. And I, I'd be, be delighted a, to. Yeah, this committee working okay. on the, these two events, if you as Love a it. decide to take yeah. them on. Now, Scott, was it just last year that we did that first one? It was two years, years ago. Two years ago, yeah. okay. So we, we would be it. eligible, because a lot of times they don't want them to go back to back, but if there's a year in between. They did have an event last year, and we didn't put an application oh, so mm -hmm. okay. okay. I would advocate for overnight as well, and I sit on that board with Kim, so we certainly can. Okay. I think that'd be an excellent partnership. Yes. Okay. In that case, overnight. 
I have direction. I will get that yeah. filled out by the May 31st and, deadline. And Kim and David are our coordinators. <laughs> All right. It's more impact on Lawrence, too. Absolutely. We're delighted to do it. Okay. Let me bring up the next document and it's really probably I just posted all the slides that we kind of went through at our strategic planning oh, just a minute Scott I want to make one comment too that um, we need to think far in the future about an event you do 2029 is the 100th anniversary of the airport that's also the 99's 100th anniversary so put that in the back of your heads okay and think about what we could do for that. Okay, that's well, next Yeah, item. thank you. Your next item is just to discuss the April 19th uh, retreat. I know we kind of wrapped up going through a SWOT analysis, which probably has a lot of discussion points. I didn't post the uh, details of that analysis as part of the uh -huh. uh, slides tonight, but we certainly have that information from the whiteboard that day. But. Uh, I know Clancy and I have talked a couple times since then in terms of what information you want to utilize moving forward on this. So it's on your agenda tonight. There is a lot of information there that everybody on the board needs to know about how the city works and how the budgeting plan works and where the money comes from and how we try to funnel the money to the right places. So, um, where, that, where is that information? Um, I missed the retreat. It's, like, if, if you've got the, uh, the agenda, agenda. Mm -hmm. if you just hit the. Uh, just, oh, just. Yeah, it's all there. there. And these were all of our slides. And this is basically what was presented at the, uh, the meeting. Um, my feeling was that it was all extremely valuable and that we could have used more time to do some better strategic planning, but, but we learned a lot while we were there, so. It was all a good thing. We may want to consider having a, an overall strategic plan, planning meeting at some point, but working on the master plan may dictate to us how we want to do that anyway. So that's where I stand on that. Okay. Are we ready, Scott? Anything? I'm ready if you are. I'm ready. Been waiting all day for this. <laughs> uh oh. Fourth item is recognition of our two outstanding. Right. Uh, <laughs> Clancy outstanding just gets up and starts uh, walking around. The Aviation Advisory Board. Uh, I know the whole entire board's been valuable to me in my two years as airport manager, but these these two board members have been especially valuable, and I've leaned on them both for their insight as to everything going on at the airport and the history of some of the projects. Uh, we've been working on the last couple of years. So I am extremely grateful for their service and will hopefully continue to lean on them from time to time as they leave the board. But I know Clancy has a few words to say as well. They are the history that we have been trying to do for the last number of years and I appreciate everything they've ever told us. And I hope that we can rope them in when we need to know things. So, Richard. For 15 years. Wow. Yay. And then, for 12. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I'd just like to say it's been a real honor and a real educational experience serving on the board. Uh, I've learned a lot about aviation, about the business of aviation, and about city government, and uh, met a lot of interesting people and interesting organizations, and I really value my, uh, my time spent on the, on the board. Well, we've certainly valued every minute you guys have been <laughs> on here. For years and years, for Richard, I don't know. Well, I, I ever greatly got appreciate it. It's here. been, it really has been some good times. Okay, our that next meeting is August 2nd. Oh, Ron, public you comment. You two guys, not Ron Reds, <laughs> most of you know me. You two guys have really made a difference to the airport. As a tenant and an airport user and as a citizen, Lawrence, thank you. Oh, good job. Thank you, Ron.
Okay. Anything else? Anybody Aviation else? Youth Camp is oh, yeah. this Saturday, May 20th. Right. It's filled up yet again. You want to say anything about the youth camp? No, everything's starting to fall together. All the loose ends are starting to get tied up. So hopefully we'll have a, a great camp this, right. week, this year and keep it going. Um, we kind of were in limbo whether the terminal building was going to be usable or not, but we worked out a, a deal with uh, Eurotech so we can have some of our modules over in Eurotech's hangar, and, and you we should be I in good say, shape. So you need another one, you got mine. So. <laughs> you got it. You Appreciate go. it. Okay, next meeting is August 2nd, and committee folks, I'll be in touch with you guys about a time to get together over the summer and work on stuff, right. <laughs> including you, Greg. <laughs> and, uh, I guess that's it. Anybody have anything else? There being no objections, we're adjourned. All right. Thank you, Clancy. Thank See you all next you. time. Hmm. Nice. <laughs>